Hello, welcome to the Thursday, April 29th, 2021 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Let's start today by talking a little bit about a feature that I have been mentioning in the past, but in the last couple of weeks, it has gotten a lot more attention, and that is Flock, or the Federated Learning of Cohorts. This is a feature that Google is proposing in order to track users, and it's supposed to replace somewhat what Google is currently doing with cookies and other methods. And in Google's words, it's sort of supposed to balance the privacy of users as well as Google's need to send you advertisements. What Flock really means is that your browser will use the last seven days of your browsing history to calculate a 16-bit number. So that's 65,335 different identifiers that can be used to essentially assign you to a group of users. The way this works is that each website is sort of assigned a category and then the sum of these categories essentially makes up this identifier. Google's justification here is that, first of all, they will not include any sensitive sites like health information and such in that identifier. And by only having 65,000 different identifiers, there is no one-to-one link to a particular user, but each identifier will have thousands of users that share this particular identifier. But of course, it's still tracking and it's not really transparent to the user. So there has been a lot of pushback against this feature. Most notably, Microsoft decided not to include it in Microsoft Edge, which of course is derived from Google Chrome and websites are starting to opt out of this feature. If you would like to opt out of this feature with your website, basically meaning that your website will not be included in this hash, then you have to set a permissions policy header. This is a relatively new header. It can be used to essentially restrict a number of features in the browser as far as your web page is concerned. And if you essentially prohibit the use of the interest cohort, then the browser will not consider your website as part of uh, this hash. At this point, Google is only experimenting with this feature. About a half a percent of users in certain regions have uh, this feature enabled. The Electronic Frontier Foundation set up a website where you can check if uh, your browser is using this feature. NetLab 360 published an interesting blog post with details of a new backdoor. Well, a backdoor that NetLab 360 just identified, it actually appears that it has been in use for at least three years. NetLab 360 calls this backdoor Roda Yakiro. As a command control channel, it does use HTTPS, but the payload itself is encrypted with AES and the blog post has has a lot of details as to how the keys are generated. In order to gain persistence, there are a couple different methods that this malware uses depending on whether it is installed as root or not. If it does have root access, it will create a systemd file in order to gain persistence. And if it's not root, it will add itself uh, to the bash rc file, but also as an auto start script to your desktop environment. And the backdoor appears to provide the typical feature set as its ability to report device information, steal sensitive information, and uh, load additional files and plugins, as well as then execute those plugins. And if you're using F5's big IP, it's that day in the week again where you need to patch your device. This time it's a Kerberos spoofing vulnerability that could be used to bypass authentication. The vulnerability was found by researchers 
at uh, Silver Fort who sort of have a little bit of knack for finding these type of vulnerabilities. They found them in a number of other perimeter security devices in the past. And well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.